Before you head out to the grocery store and place a few cans of your favorite condensed soup in your grocery cart, I need you to stop and ask yourself, are you really making the best choice? Now don't get me wrong, any home cook can appreciate how these cans are a meal starter or finisher for almost anything. But once you realize just how easy, cheap, and few ingredients the real and dare I say better tasting homemade version is, you're gonna wanna leave this can right there on the shelf. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make your own cream of whatever, but specifically the most common ones. Cream of chicken, cream of mushroom, and cream of celery. Now, this is your first time over here, so what you need to know about my kitchen. My cooking leans deeply towards a country cooking style. And so this recipe uses real butter, rich heavy cream, and bacon drippings. But since everyone has a seat at my table, I share substitutions if you or someone you know is non-dairy, keto, or just wants a lower fat option. First up, let me show you how easy it is to make cream of mushroom. If you're the kind of person that saves your bacon drippings so that you can add that touch of smoky, savory flavor to a dish, you'll start by heating equal portions of bacon drippings and butter in a large heavy bottom pot over medium high heat until melted. Olive oil can be used in place of bacon grease. While that's coming to temperature, dice an onion and add it to the pan to saute for two to three minutes until softened and translucent. You'll have something that kind of looks like this. These are some beautiful brown mushrooms I picked up from the market, but cremini, mini portobello, or a combination of your favorite mushroom varieties also works well. Dice everything as small as you can, including the stems, then transfer to the pan. Remember to use only unblemished mushrooms in good condition. Add a hearty tablespoon of minced garlic to the pan, then transfer your chopped mushrooms to the pot. At this point, things are starting to smell really, really good. Now thyme pairs perfectly with mushroom and it's an herb that I have growing on my deck so I headed outside to harvest a handful. You can also use fresh or dried rosemary, sage, or parsley. Dry red or white wines are perfect in this and add robust flavor, but if you prefer to leave it out, that is absolutely fine. Sprinkle the softened mushrooms with flour, mix well, and cook for at least two minutes. Next, you'll add your stock. Now I'm using chicken because I already have some on hand, but beef bouillon paste by the brand Better Than Bouillon or beef bouillon cubes also tastes delicious. Slowly mix in half and half until combined, then season with a bit of seasonal salt and pepper and fresh or dried parsley. I've harvested this portion from my garden. Cover your pan with the lid and let things simmer for 10 to 15 minutes, stirring occasionally until your desired level of thickness is reached. While you don't need an immersion blender to puree the mushrooms, doing so adds to the thickness of the final product and creates a smooth, consistent texture, but feel free to leave those chunks of mushrooms and onions right in there. Ooh, now doesn't this texture look almost perfect? I'm gonna freeze this batch to have on hand for recipes later. Y'all, look at this homemade creamy goodness that comes together in minutes. When you make your own cream soups, you're the boss of Flavortown, and there's no more puzzling over strange words on the back of a can. And imagine those busy nights when you just don't feel like cooking. Now all you have to do is pop out your frozen cream of mushroom, and you're halfway to a delicious dinner. If this is our first time meeting, hi, I'm Cassandra from the blog, becomingafarmgirl.com. I'm here to help you start cooking from scratch and living a farm fresh life without land or livestock. Don't worry about writing anything down. All three recipes are linked in the description box below or already in your inbox if you've signed up for recipes. Making cream with celery comes together like that. On just a townhouse deck, I have five vertical grain stalk planters that allow me to grow a mix of 200 herbs, fruits, and vegetables, including the main ingredient for this recipe, celery. The seven inch deep planter pockets of a green stalk allow you to grow nearly anything, and I've got over eight pockets of celery that I've been growing since the spring. While the stalks haven't reached full maturity yet, they're already robust with flavor and very crisp. Reducing your reliance on the grocery store includes learning how to make common staples from scratch that won't include tons of preservatives or too much salt and words you can't pronounce. Even growing just a small portion of food that your family already enjoys, like I am, is one less thing you have to buy. 
You can use my code BAFARMGIRL to take $10 off your green stock. I'm so glad I shaded my celery on the bottom tier to keep it crisp even in the late August heat. Listen to how crunchy it is. I'm giving the celery a rough chop so that it'll fit into my colander, but you'll want to give your celery a good rinse before using, then place it on your cutting board to dice it into smaller pieces. The steps are nearly the same as before. Melt bacon lard, butter, or olive oil into a heavy bottom pot over medium-high heat, and then let it fully melt and wait until things start to foam, about two to four minutes. Grab an onion and give it a rough chop and transfer the diced onion, celery, and minced garlic into the pan to cook until softened and translucent, about five to seven minutes. Next, you'll add the flour, chicken broth, and milk or cream, and stir until the mixture is smooth. Again, I like to use an immersion blender on the low setting so it doesn't splash and burn you. It was a little too thick, so I added some more chicken broth liquid, stirred again, and see, I've got a perfect creamy soup. Finally, I am adding my seasoning, some seasonal and salt and pepper and just a pinch of sugar, which doesn't make it sweet at all. Then you're gonna allow things to continue to simmer on low for another minute or two. And now let's do the spoon test. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's perfect. And guess what, yours will be too. While that's simmering on the stove, I wanted to jump in here and share some of my recipe notes to answer any questions you may have before or after you make this recipe. First this, you have probably figured it out by now that condensed soups are just essentially gravies. And that means that your ingredient list is simple, short, and always the same. So your first category is fat, and you're gonna need either butter or oil or baking drippings. Then you're gonna need one or a combination of liquids, and this can be juice drippings, broth, stock, milk or wine. Your other category is seasonings like salt and pepper and then herbs which are optional just depending on your taste. So this means that you can and should be making a lot of cream of soups that you just can't find in grocery stores like cream of leeks, spinach, chives, bacon, broccoli. I mean all of them use that same format and you don't even have to stick with just one. I often combine the different veggies that I'm harvesting either from the garden or bits of produce that I need to use up in the fridge. And those little combination no recipe condensed soup work wonderfully in my dump and bake casseroles or as a pasta sauce and meat topping. Now I also wanted to let you know that adding chicken bouillon helps match the concentrated flavor that's found in condensed soups. And that's helpful to know in case you're using store-bought chicken broth instead of homemade chicken stock. And also to reduce the sodium you can use unsalted butter or reduced sodium chicken broth and bouillon to lower the salt but you can also just leave it out all together. Now this recipe can last in the refrigerator for one week so seven days or or you can put it in the freezer for up to four months. The mixture may separate once it's reheated, but whisking will correct that. Now I share a lot of canning recipes on this channel, but none of these condensed soups can be canned because they contain dairy. Also remember that the recipes I have linked below are a guide. You really can't mess this up. So adjust the seasonings to your taste buds. If you add too much flour, don't stress, just add some more milk or broth. And the reverse is also true. If it's too thin, sprinkle in some flour to thicken it up. Oh, this recipe also works well with dehydrated ingredients, so feel free to forego fresh and instead use your dehydrated celery, mushrooms, onions, and herbs. This is also a perfect recipe to use with frozen milk. And this recipe and my condensed soups are one of the reasons that I like to keep frozen milk in the freezer. So maybe about a month ago, I picked up this organic whole milk that was reduced for quick sale and they wanted $6.49 for it and I picked this up for half price at $2.99. So if you have a little bit of milk that's about to expire, stick it in the freezer or go ahead and quickly make this recipe. Now I don't like the texture of drinking thawed out milk, but it is perfect for stovetop recipes. I really like this recipe because the price of condensed soups has really shot up. And even though it goes on sale around holiday time, it's usually hard to find or there are quantity restrictions. Now, do I still have a few cans of the shelf stable store stuff? Yes, but it is not 
nearly as much as I used to buy, which was cases of this stuff. And that was before I realized how easy and cheap it was to make with ingredients that I already had on hand. If you aren't already making your own broths and stocks, which is an ingredient that you need for this recipe, what are you waiting for? I like to keep this little thing, I'll link it below, in my refrigerator, y'all have seen it before. It hooks right onto your drawer. So as you're cutting up, you know, anything, a bell pepper or onions or crushing garlic, you just put the scraps in here. And then once it is full, usually it just takes me, you know, a couple of days, I dump it into my crock pot, add some water and let that thing just, you know, have at it for the next eight to 10 hours. And then I will strain it and then put the broth, this is some um, vegetable broth that I have, I probably put a few bones in here too, um, you know, just in the refrigerator. And I just constantly do that, you know? And so that makes it really easy to always have a source of broth or stock. So here are my notes on making this recipe keto. You're going to combine equal parts heavy cream and unsweetened almond milk. Now, if you need a nut-free option, you can substitute coconut milk uh, beverage, the kind in the dairy section, not the canned. If you want it to be uh, an ultra rich creamy soup, just use more heavy cream. Or instead of the cream and the almond milk, and this one's really, really good, you wanna blend in some room temperature cream cheese at the very end, and that will make things super thick and creamy. I also wanted to include a note on flour for some of y'all. So we need flour to create that delicious creamy uh, texture, but you can leave it out and use cornstarch if you wish. So I would recommend using two to three tablespoons of cornstarch that's mixed with a quarter cup of water. So you want it to be uh, slurry, I guess is the word. If you're unsure about the quantities to your liking, just add the uh, cornstarch slurry in like tablespoon uh, increments and then stirring in between until you've achieved whatever you know texture you desire. For a dairy-free option, you can leave out the cream and the milk all together, but you will still need a liquid like a meat or veggie broth. If you need to leave out the cream, you can substitute it with evaporated milk or regular milk. You want to use full fat or 2% milk. Just be careful not to bring it to a rapid boil as it may curl on you. So you want to go with a very gentle simmer over low heat for about a minute to heat it through. You're going to want to do something that is called tempering your milk by just sticking it in the microwave for like 45 seconds. And this prevents curdling and lumps from forming when it's added to the pot. Now to turn this into a broth, add a half a cup of milk for every one cup of condensed. As I said earlier, you do not need a recipe per se to make condensed soups. So as you are watching me make these condensed soups, I'm not using one myself. So when you see the recipe on my blog, but you see the amount of celery and herbs that I am using just by like the handfuls, it's because I am trying to use what is growing in my garden out back right now. It is so easy to adapt this recipe. So just trust yourself. All right, those are all the recipe tips that I have for now. For more, check out the coordinating blog post on becomingafarmgirl.com. Now let's get back to our homemade condensed soup. Canning jars are freezer safe and you can portion your soups into 16 ounce or two cup pint jars if you have a small family like me, or use the quart size 32 ounce four cup jars if you have a larger family. Now let me show you how to make your very own cream of chicken. Start by melting butter in a heavy bottom pot over medium high heat. Allow it to fully melt and begin to foam, which cooks off the water. Next, sprinkle in your flour while constantly whisking for the next three to five minutes to cook off the raw flour taste. You want the consistency of wet sand. Remove the pan from the heat and add a third of your chicken broth and whisk until combined, then add a third more until combined. Finally, whisk in the remaining portion, keeping a constant stir. Temper your milk until it's warm, about 45 seconds in the microwave, and slowly add it to the saucepan as you stir to combine. Now it's time to add your seasonings, and I use a combination of chicken bouillon, garlic powder, and celery salt. Then return your pan to medium high heat to thicken it back up. As it heats, you'll want to whisk continuously as it almost reaches a boil. Your soup will thicken up very quickly, so remove it from the heat once it's thickened. As it sits and cools, it'll continue to firm up on you. Now tell me this isn't an exact dupe for what you're used to seeing in a tin can, except this tastes infinitely better and comes from your very own kitchen.
All right, I'm stocked up on all my cream of soup, so I'm going to take my jars downstairs to my basement freezer using this carrying tote. I can't wait to make a creamy pot pie with my own homemade cream of chicken, ooh, or a hearty casserole with my rich homemade cream of mushroom, and use my cream of celery to add a special touch to my favorite rice dishes. And you know, so can you. To learn how to make more of your favorite recipes from scratch, click on the video on the screen to watch my pantry grocery guides. I'll see you in my kitchen or garden soon. Take care, friends. <laughs>